I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. This is broom corn. It's not corn, it's a member of the sorghum family and you grow it because it's beautiful and to make brooms. <laughs> Doesn't look like much right now, but this grew back from when I planted a whole row of it in uh, 2013. I did attempt to uh, save the broom straw and plan to make a small broom. Check it out. I planted Amish Rainbow Blend broom corn seed along the street side of my parkway July 1st, 2013. I added two inches of leaf compost on top. I thought it would make a lovely border, and I wanted to make my own broom. <laughs> Germination was spotty because seeds got lost in the loose leaf litter. Wait to mulch up your broom corn until after you see shoots, or the stems will not be supported well. This delayed development. Six weeks after planting seed, it was only a foot tall, as you can see when I posed with my tomatoes. By September the 2nd, the parkway was filling up fast, and you couldn't tell the sweet corn from the broom corn. Well, the sweet corn had tassels. <laughs> Five days later, the seed heads, also called brushes, were popping open on the broom corn, and you could see the different colors of the rainbow seed. But there was an aphid infestation on some of the leaves. The little white specks are the exoskeletons after the nymphs emerge. One doesn't usually think of yellow jackets as friends in the garden, but they were all over those aphids that day. Here you can see one chomping away. Nymphs can't fly, so their only defense is to fall from the plant, if they can elude the vice grip of those jaws. The wasp couldn't fill up fast enough. Aphids are some of the most destructive insect pests on cultivated plants in temperate zones like mine. But the broom corn lived to fight another day, and the innumerable rainbow-colored seeds were glorious against the brilliant blue sky. It was like the 4th of July in September. The brushes were exploding with color and abundance, in spite of the aphids. <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. This six by 20 foot parkway has gone through a number of transformations in the two years that I've been growing vegetables. Everything from corn to cabbage. Right now it's October the 7th and it's time to prepare this space for winter vegetables. First step, harvest the broom corn. Traditionally, broom corn was tabled before harvest by folding down the stalks, overlapping the brushes in the rows to support one another to allow the brushes to harden and mature. But with only one row, I just clipped mine and dried it inside. These seeds came from the tallest stalks, so those are the ones I want to replant for next year. <laughs> one of the great things about broom corn is you can plant it and forget about it because it's relatively free of disease. Uh, that's my kind of plant. <laughs> then I cleared off all the stalks. Well, I thought I got them all. <laughs> This one little broom corn sprouted back from after I pulled it out before, so... And those two. Wait. And those four. So, I'm keeping them. Okay, as you can see, I have let my broom straw completely dry inside. And you could try combing it out on a flat surface. However, the seeds tend to <laughs> fly all over the place. So I recommend just comb them down into a bag with a wide tooth comb. In just a few strokes, you can have all the seeds collected. It's hundreds of seeds on one little stalk. And then you have your broom straw Obviously, this needs more cleaning. Harvesting the broom corn was fun, but there wasn't enough straw to make a broom. 
In March of this year, I attended the Vancouver Web Fest, where Late Bloomer was a nominated web series. I happened upon the Granville Island Broom Company. Sisters Mary and Sarah Schweiger learned to make brooms from their family while growing up in British Columbia. The brooms are woven using shaker methods and are designed to withstand years of regular use. No two brooms are alike. They are unique forms of art. I love my handmade turkey wing whisk broom from the Granville Island Broom Company. Turkey wing. Here's my broom corn in October 2015 and it just keeps plugging along, doesn't ask for much, makes a great border at the back of your garden and um, drought tolerant. So I just leave it. <laughs> I just want you to look at this whole body of plants here and realize that I am standing in the street of my street. So all of this is a border to my yard. So plant a food forest in your parkway. If you grow broom straw, please let me know. Thanks for watching and please share Late Bloomer with a friend. I'm Kay, I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I keep meaning to mention this. Um, you can't get the full story of Late Bloomer and all the content that I'm sharing uh, on the YouTube channel alone. So please subscribe at latebloomershow.com and get the full picture. <laughs> and if you do, you can get a free ebook, 10 Steps to a Great First Garden. And if you're a beginner, this would be a great thing to have, and it's free. So subscribe.